The van der Waals equation state is probably the most well-known one. And this is where we include repulsive interactions and also the fact that molecules have a finite volume. So the ideal gas law would be P equals NRT over V. But repulsive forces between the molecules hamper their approach to one another. And what that means is that the overall volume is decreased. So what we do is we put a term in here that takes something off the overall volume, where B is an experimentally determined coefficient that's different for different gases, and N's the number of moles. The reason that N is in there is because, obviously, the more number of molecules that are around, the more volume you have to take off. So if you want to think of this graphically, one way you can look at it is, in the ideal gas law, we assume zero volume. So the gas molecules would be point particles, and therefore they'd be able to move infinitesimally close to one another. So the two molecules could exist within very close range. When you bring a size to the molecules, they now can only approach each other to within a radius of themselves. This effectively means that you have to exclude a volume of 2R because they can't get any closer than 2R. One of the radii from this atom or molecule or particle and one of the radii from this one. When you sum this up over all of the molecules, you end up, having to, you end up with a significantly lowered volume and therefore this has to be taken into account in the equations. So the second thing is we've got to include attractive interactions between molecules. These attractive interactions reduce the overall pressure. And so therefore, this is our equation that we derived by taking into account the size of the molecules. Now we have to take into account another term which takes something off the pressure. The reason that we're squaring this is because the molecules attract each other in a pairwise fashion. So if you imagine you have a big system of molecules and you consider one molecule, that is going to attract all of the n minus 1 molecules. So it's going to have an interaction term that's going to pull in all of the other molecules from around it according to the inverse square law. There's going to be an attraction between this molecule and the n minus 1 molecules and each of the other n minus 1 molecules are going to attract the other molecules. And this, what this effectively does is it squares the, you have to square the number of molecules involved. So there's two new empirical terms. The first one, B, accounts for a decrease in volume and A accounts for the attractive interactions between the molecules. So the overall equation can be written as this.